Hey friends, today we're going over the next in our PGP encryption series. Make sure to share this video with others, post it anywhere you like, and help this channel move up in the rankings. The more backlinks that are posted of this channel and blog, the higher in rankings and the more people will be able to see it. Thank you for helping me to promote this channel and these posts. The other day we went over PGP signature verification and I used a Pinadio image as an example. It talked about why man in the middle attacks are a big reason you need to worry about signature verification on all your Linux images because if you install a Linux installation where you have not verified the integrity, if it is a malicious or malware filled image, you can't trust anything on that Linux computer thereafter. We went over how to encrypt decrypt messages, create new PGP keys. We went over asymmetric encryption where you share your public key, you keep your private key, and you import the public keys of those you want to communicate with. If you want to know more about that, be sure to watch this video, learn PGP in just 11 minutes of video. Today I'm going to be moving my PGP keys over to my Pine phone and I'm going to talk to you about ways you can do this for any system. You don't need a Pine phone for this video at all. You can use a Windows computer, a Linux computer, or a Mac. It doesn't really matter but you may want to have your PGP keys on all your devices so that you can receive, send messages with people you have communication with on any of your devices. Of course, I do recommend to only store it on what you consider your most secure devices. You don't want your private key getting in anyone else's hands, and I'm going to be covering how you can prevent that today. We're going to be going over some metric encryption, how to encrypt your private key using symmetric encryption and then allows you to send it by email. Keep in mind a online provider that promises encryption may promise encryption but you can't exactly verify that. That's what I do differently on this channel than most other channels. So I don't go over things in a trusting way. I try to use techniques in order to go around the trust that is required by certain providers. And the fact of the matter is, if you have an email provider that's encrypted in your browser, you really can't verify the software on the server side. So keep that in mind. That's why we learn PGP encryption. It also allows you to compartmentalize that encryption process from the transmission or the transfer of the data so that you could use a air-gapped computer to perform all your decryption and encryption techniques and then transfer between encrypted volumes to manage that. If you're in such a position, if you're a journalist or something like that, you know that's one of the essential reasons for PGP encryption uh, a lot of times when the data really matters and your safety is on the line if you're in different countries where encryption is frowned upon or journalism is frowned upon, you may want to know how to use PGP encryption. So today we're, as mentioned, we're going to be backing up our key in order to move it to another system. I'm going to talk about that. I'm going to show you a couple ways you could do that. So the first thing you'll do is you'll want to open GPA, GNU Privacy Assistant. In my system, it just happens to be under accessories. And here it is at GPA. And I also have GPA installed on my Pine phone. We'll go ahead and open our key manager. Next, we will click on our key that we want to back up. And at this point, we go to the keys menu, go to backup. Then we're going to save it to a location. And at this point, at the top, you see where it's saving it at slash home slash user slash dot GNUPG, which is a hidden directory, a dot directory. And we'll go ahead and save it here. We'll go ahead and hit save. And at this point, it's going to say it's going to replace because I already have it. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do that just because this example, you can save it anywhere you like. At this point, it's going to ask what your actual password phrase is for your key. So let's go ahead and type that in. Now we have saved our key to this location. We'll go ahead and copy that directory location and we're going to open a terminal. In our case, we're on Linux. 
we'll go ahead and do CD. I'm already in the directory, but for the example, for the sake of the example, we're using the command. At this point, we can then list what's in this directory. As we can see, it says secret key right here that has the private key in there. And what we're going to talk about now is how would we safely transfer this to another device. So let's go ahead and talk about the symmetric encryption we're going to use. What we're going to use today is we're going to actually use the lowercase c flag. We're going to use symmetric cipher to encrypt that private key in order to safely transfer it to another device. So we'll go ahead and use gpg, the lowercase c. Then we'll do secret key. And what it's going to do is it's going to create another file with an extension of .gpg. So at this point, we hit enter. It's going to ask us for a passphrase. Be sure to use numbers, upper and lowercase letters, and symbols for this. You want to make sure it's a strong passphrase. If you decide to use email or something else, that file is always possible that it could get into someone else's hands and you don't want your private key in anyone else's hands. That's the whole point of it being called a private key. At this point we have a new file, it's called secret key and then an extension in .gpg which is the encrypted file. And as you can see the file command allows us to look at the file type and it identifies it as a GPG symmetrically encrypted data file. So that shows and verifies to us that it is properly encrypted. Now what we can do at this point is make our decision. How do we want to transfer it? Well I'm going to offer you three different ways you could transfer it. Since it's encrypted with symmetric encryption you could use this to this file, the .gpg one, and you could simply email it to yourself or another party. You can also file transfer using SSH. You could use that as well. We can see some of the different SSH options here, what we have actually in our system. This is the command here that we could use. So we could use SCP. SCP is going to use SSH to securely copy a file so it's going to encrypt that connection and it can transfer it over to the other machine if you have SSH running on that machine. Now first I want to mention since we're using the Pine phone I did make a guide on securing SSH and I want to point that out to you because it's a really important guide if you're not familiar with creating SSH key authentication. Highly suggest you go through this. I even show how weak pin numbers are for a login and it just happens that Pine phones have pin numbers as their default uh, password. And I, I actually go through the process of cracking those pin numbers, default pin numbers, using most common pin number lists using Hydra, which is a really neat tool that you can use to test it out. And I just wanted to demonstrate how weak pin numbers are but I offer solutions here. I also show you with cut and paste screenshots and otherwise a video as well on how to create the key authentication to make it so only key authentication is accepted. Check out this guide. I'm not going to go through it today because it's already fully covered here. Show you how to do the full key authentication setup so you can have a secure SSH. And at that point you could then use the SCP command. We could use SCP secret key.gpg but with you know SCP you're using secure SSH so you could use the regular but I still encourage people to always encrypt files when they're transferring them and this is the login at the host the location it'll be saved at and the great thing about it is since I've already set up the key authentication I don't even have to type a password there and it transferred it at 100%. Now that I have transferred it over I've opened a shell window for my Pine phone or other Linux device in your case and we can decrypt that backup encrypted secret key and what we're going to use to do that is the gpg command again we're going to use the lowercase d flag then we're going to use the name of the file the dot gpg and at this point we need to send the output somewhere or it'll print to the screen so we're going to go ahead and send the output as 
secret key.asc. You can name this anything you want, but I do suggest a, a .asc extension. And at this point, it's going to decrypt that data, the symmetric encryption. It's going to send it into this. So it'll be the secret key will be this file. At this point, it's going to ask for our passphrase, and it's going to allow me to decrypt the encrypted backup of the key. And at this point, you can then open our key that was backed up and encrypted using symmetric cipher. We can now import this into GNU Privacy Assistant. And what we'll do there is we'll simply go up to the keys menu, drop down, and then we'll go to import. And then we can select our backup of our private key. And we're going to do that and import that right now into GNU Privacy Assistant. And now that we have gotten our secret key imported, we can hit the close right here. And we have our key right here, as you can see. And it matches the fingerprint of the one we sent. And we can then click on that. We can ensure that we sign it and trust it as it will be our new key that we'll be using on our Pine phone. And at this point you can follow my other tutorials on how to send your public key, how to check fingerprints, how to check for to verify signed images, and everything that was in the previous tutorial uh, can be used here with GPA in the Pine phone or other devices. You can open the clipboard under Windows and at that point you can then select your key to encrypt a message. As you can see right here, I have the first PGP encrypted message right here in the window. I can then copy that and I can paste that into text messages or possibly emails and anything else I need to send PGP in. Pine phone is the example. You can also do this on the Librem 5 or any other Linux device. That's the great thing about the Pine phone. You can do all the things you traditionally did with your desktop right on your phone. That's the end of this guide. Make sure to like, share, and subscribe. And if you want to support work like this, go to buymeacoffee.com slash politictech, and you can read all the public tutorials there. And I'll be back later with more on how to protect your privacy.